We are in the coral reef of Monterey right now. It's a small aquarium facility back behind my lab uh, that we use to hold reef building corals for tests that we want to do um, to set up our experiments in the field. So we had to devise a very standard heat stress. It's essentially a little coral stress tank and about two gallons of water. It has a set of chillers on it. It has a set of heaters in it. And all of those are run through a controller. And with that, we can essentially put this little bit of water through all of the temperature changes that a coral might see out on the reef where it lives. We have a set of researchers now, Rachel Bay and Noah Rose, in the Cook Islands. They've got a mimic of this same tank that's running exactly the same profile. On the atoll of Manahiki, it's a tiny island about nine degrees south of the equator. We've been taking the temperature out here uh, four times a day. We're out on the uh, reef crest where the corals we're interested are, in are growing. Even with all that ocean water coming in, it rarely gets below 29 Celsius. These are our acclimation tanks that we've rigged to change the temperature so we can keep corals for a week or two in these tanks and try to change their thermal tolerance. So this tank here is actually pretty cold for corals. That tank is hot for corals and what we'll do is after the corals have stayed in these two tanks for maybe a week then we'll um, test their thermal tolerance and see if it's changed from what it is out on the reef. Part of what we're doing is trying to take this information about heat resistance and growth rates and their ability to withstand future conditions and, and perhaps learn how to replant and regrow future reefs that have higher resistance to future conditions. Maybe we could transplant them and grow reefs in a, in a better, faster, smarter way.